Traditional afternoon tea in a grand hotel is one of life's real luxuries and there's a fairly standard formula, scones and dainty cakes served in elegant surroundings. But chefs are always trying to come up with new ideas and three years ago the Merrion Hotel launched the Art Tea. Paul Kelly is the pastry chef responsible for the amazing cakes and pastries. But to find out more about the inspiration behind the Art Tea, I'm going much, to meet the hotel's general manager, Peter McCann. One of the unique selling points of the hotel, along with many others, is, is the art collection. Lachlan and Brenda Quinn gathered a substantial collection over many years, reflecting this, a style that would have been accumulated in houses over centuries, which is essentially what we tried to do with the whole hotel. As a result, when the hotel opened, there was a huge response to the calibre of the art collection, and we realised that this was different to any other hotel in the country. That, coupled with the constant search for innovation to create something different and something new, because at the end of the day, our business is fiercely competitive, and came up with the idea of interpreting the art collection through food. We've taken the traditional afternoon tea, which used to be one course, and we've taken it to a three-course experience. We'll start with a savoury course, it will be followed by a sweet course, and then finishes with the art course, which are the pieces that we've interpreted from the art collection. So it's a real food experience. It's a fantastic food experience, and we're blessed that we've had Paul Kelly with us since the very start. And I know that Paul would like to see you, and we'd love to invite you down to meet him in the kitchen. I can't wait. Looking forward to it, Peter. Thank you. Paul, it's great to be in your kitchen. Kevin, thanks Lovely very to see much. You again. Yeah, you're oh. welcome. I've heard all about this art tea and it's very, very special. I can't wait to see. What are you going to cook for me today? Well, today we're going to, we've picked uh, three pastries. We're going to start off with um, an Irish artist and it's called the Pat Moray. We're also going to do frying pan funnel and eggs. And we're going to do uh, Madonna and Child. Yeah. It's my interpretation of what's on the walls. So what's the first thing we do for the dish? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is basically, I'm going to pipe the shoe buns mm -hmm. and I'm going to show you how to do the crumble mix on top. This is the shoe pastry. How do you make that? A very basic shoe pastry recipe. So it's basically water, milk, salt, sugar, butter, mm -hmm. and you bring that to the boil. And then when that comes to the boil, you add your flour and then you make like a roux in the pan. When you're mixing the roux, it's got to come away smooth and shiny. The flour's cooked then. It's cooked. People get very scared when, a, when you go to pipe. I mean, it's a, it's a technique that you really have to practice. Always use parchment paper. Minutes. The important thing to do is not to drag your shoe pastry when you're finished, like not to drag it like that. Ah. You just push your piping nozzle yeah. in and just flick it off. Then we have the crumble mix. No, I've never seen this. What is it? Ground almonds, mm -hmm. brown sugar, butter, and flour. Equal amounts of everything. Wow. And you mix it up to like a paste, and then you yeah. roll it nice and thin between parchment paper. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut and then place on top. So I'm just going to lift these up very carefully. Just place it on top of the raw shoe pastry. Most importantly, it gives a nice crunch when you bite down through it. So we're going to just put that in the oven now, probably around about 175 to 180 I'll degrees for about 35 minutes. This is the frying pan funnel and egg. So basically what it is, it's a, a vanilla flavoured biscuit. The pitcher is shaped like this here. So we have a nice orange curd which goes in the centre, sandwiching the biscuits together. So how do you make the curd? Orange, orange juice, orange mm -hmm. segments. Yes. And there's uh, butter, eggs, sugar. And a little bit of lemon juice in there. Can I taste well. it? Yeah, go ahead. Perfect. Mm. Really tangy. Yeah, it is beautiful. beautiful. It kind of has to be tangy because you've got a lot of uh, icing on top it. as well. So, so we basically just... Pipe that in. Pipe that in your centre, yeah. Add a little bit of moisture to the biscuit as well, and then we layer this on top. And then what we do, we have to create the same colour as the painting, so you, you design your colours around exactly, so you get the, the right amount of colour and the right shade. So this is basically a royal icing. Egg white, sugar, and a little bit of colouring. Icing sugar, that is. So we pipe the border first, and it's important that you let that set okay. 15 minutes to give it strength, because so, you don't want the icing falling out over the side. Yeah. But then you come back later on, and then you, yeah. just, you just literally just fill in the icing like that. You need a steady hand for that, Paul. You do. So, Basically, the next one is like a white tablecloth. You do your border first, you allow that to dry and set, and that gives the outside strength, and then you just fill it in with the, the icing. So the black, basically on this one, is going to be like a frying pan. Okay. It's going to be a glass of wine. It's going to be a couple of little dots, which will possibly hold the eggs in the painting. A nice little fine line here, and this is going to be the wine glass, and there's a couple of little dots here as well. All hand done. So this is to look like a frying pan, and then just a little zigzag. That's the finishing touches now. So the important thing now is to allow that to dry, Nevin, because if you stand up royal icing too soon, like we're going to stand this biscuit up, it'll just run off the biscuit. Oh, we don't want that. So we're basically ready to assemble the three pastries now, so I just have to get some bits and pieces from the fridge. Okay. Uh, what I've decided to do with all the plates as well, just to pipe a little design. 
and we try and keep it in character with the design on the plate as well. People think I'm mad, but I carry a chocolate piping bag everywhere with me in my, <laughs> in in my pockets. Pocket, yeah. Yeah. Your body temperature keeps it warm, so you can have it at a moment's notice. Yeah, the first chef but I've just ever make seen sure, doing yeah, when you put it in. I've eaten it all the time. <laughs> yeah. This is the so, creative genius here. So every plate gets the same design, and it kind of marries into what's going on around the plate as well. Yeah. It takes the bareness off the plate. And we're going to start with the frying pan funnel and eggs. So we're just going to stand this up on you its own. You have to pull it out another bag. A white one, yeah. <laughs> That's on the left-hand side of my pocket. <laughs> we have a little um, tool here which really uh, makes this? our life. Yeah. So basically what this is, um, is a spray. Yeah. It has two purposes. So if you have any dust on your, on your plate, the quickest way to get it off is just with a little spray like that. Okay. Yeah. And then when you turn it upside down like this, it, co it blows cold air. Wow. Now, in, on a hot kitchen, like you know, yeah. uh, chocolate can be very kind oh, of so messy. Mess. Yeah, yeah, it can. Mm. So if you want to stick something on the side of your plate, this is the tool. We're going to use our white chocolate like mm -hmm. a little, almost like a glue. Now, this will just stand straight. And then basically, all we do is then from a distance, a oh, little bit of cold air, and the chocolate's already set. That's brilliant. Ready for service. So again, the design has to be facing the guests. We're going to put it on this way. And turn the plate. And then turn the plate. Yeah. So, Nevin, we're going to do the Pat Moray now, which is a Pauline Buick painting. And that's the shoe paste, if you remember earlier. And we put a flat crumble on top. And then what you can see is it kind of uh, just cracks. Brilliant. So, when the shoe bun expands, mm -hmm. it stretches the crumble and cracks and cooks at the same time. So that's fantastic. Isn't that beautiful? We're going to put a little hole in the base here. And this is where we're going to fill our first mousse. Oh. This is a chocolate mousse. Squeeze it in there. And you squeeze, squeeze, squeeze till you see it coming back out over itself again, like this. What I have here is some tempered chocolate discs with a little bit of mousse at the end, just stick that base there. So it's a trio of chocolate mousse. So it has dark milk and white chocolate mousse. This is another disc on top, again tempered, just to separate the final mousse. And this is just chocolate mousse here now again. So we have curls. some chocolate curries, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Now these are to copy in the painting, you can see some palm trees. And then just a small little bit of uh, chocolate here and here maybe. So we're just going to get a little bit of colour in there now yeah. with some what look like leaves. A magic spray should help us along here. Oh, is that chocolate? That's all chocolate as well, yeah. Oh, so we're just going to place this one again on the plate. And our last pastry today, Nevin, is going to be our Madonna and Child, which is basically a bitter orange cheesecake. So oh. it's just cocoa butter and chocolate, equal amounts. Yeah. And a regular paint spraying gun, obviously wash it out. So the cheesecake has to be frozen to get the velvet look. So again, we're back to the... Um, the chocolate, I had to switch pockets. pockets. <laughs> For lifting purposes, I put a, a white chocolate disc on the base, allow it to stick. What we have here is the painting. I've worked with a company in Strasbourg. They give it to you in this form here, which is just a piece of plastic with the exact part of the painting which I asked them to do. And we put tempered white chocolate on the back. So then we just basically allow the chocolate to crystallize and we peel off the plastic backing. And that gives you a beautiful shine on your chocolate. So I'm going to pick out some pieces, nice colourful pieces here. Okay. Assemble them around the side of the uh, cheesecake. Again, I'm going to use my white chocolate as my glue. So it's cocoa butter replacing ink, basically. That's lovely. So it's that's the, the base of it done. We have a nice little passion fruit uh, gel, which is passion fruit reduced down. Add a small little bit of apricot glaze to the, the reduced down passion fruit, and it gives you a beautiful little flavour. And then as part of the painting as well, there's a couple of green lines. So I've just incorporated that by making a few little chocolate curls again. Stick them to the side. And just to finish it off then, we're going to put a little bit of silver leaf. Some people can sometimes mistake this for tin foil, but it's edible. And it just goes on, just like that. And now we're just going to carefully put this onto our plate. And there you have it. Fabulous. It's nearly too good to eat, but I'm afraid I have to taste it. You cut it? I yeah. have a knife I just trust handy. you. <laughs> Oh, look at that. So you have the classic crunchy base, the bitter orange cheesecake, and then there's a nice little jelly and added texture. So I'm going to taste a little bit of everything. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Gel on top. I'm going to get the silver leaf. That's so good. It's so light. Mm. The cheesecake is made from a Sabion base, which makes it even lighter again. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you for being at home, Chef. Wish you continued success. Cheers.